Good morning. Welcome to the Harry Jackson Show. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. We have a great show planned for you today. A lot of things that are going on. And I want to inform you that we're a part of the Urban Family Talk Network. We believe that we are going to make a difference in your world and in the life of your family. I'm uh, joined in the studio by my co-host, uh, David Parlett, and uh, a little later on the show, we will actually have one of his relatives in the studio. Don't worry, there won't be any gunshots in the background. Hatfields and McCoys, this will not be, thank the Lord. And uh, she is an author, speaker, and digestive health specialist. And we'll all have to understand more about it, what a digestive health specialist is. And we'll come back and talk a little bit more uh, to her and about what she does and how she can help us. But first, the three issues that are in the news that we want to talk about. As you know, we bring our uh, spin on things from a, a biblical worldview, a Christian worldview. And uh, on this day, Excuse me. We deal with health issues uh, as the body of our program. But first, who could ignore what's been going on with Benghazi? Front page of the Washington Post, we're looking at the fact that officials uh, are saying the facts were withheld on Benghazi. And listening to everything over the last several days, Seems as though there still is a very partisan um, banter going on about what happened or didn't happen and how it happened. Even though some amazing information is coming out about Benghazi, we are finding that uh, there's certain of our uh, Democratic friends who don't want to um, really acknowledge that mistakes were made. I'm going to say big time with regard to this thing. Um, and I think that there are some areas where we need to question who did what, when. Um, by and large, though, I think that it, this has to rise above partisan politics. I, I do think that it should point to the fact that we have misread in some ways uh, the direction of policy, and uh, we're going to have a discussion with uh, Brother Parlett here in just a moment. Um, I want to talk to you in, in just a few seconds about American foreign policy, who we put in uh, Libya, uh, the fact that we're calling for a human rights agenda uh, that really calls for uh, the legalization of homosexual marriage, we had a homosexual, most people don't want to tell you this, uh, as the ambassador. We have a radical Muslim challenge. We have breakdown in communications with those folks in the country. And uh, there had been violence going on for weeks. All of these things, for a lot of different reasons, say, hey, watch out, violence might happen. And uh, for that reason, I think we need to not only look at who's the blame, uh, for what's happened uh, with regard to uh, the Benghazi event. But is there something deeper stirring these folks than somebody's video or the historic imperialistic approach of America? Or could it be that our current administration has been putting salt in an open wound relative to the aggravation? of these folks and their value system, thus showing that we might perhaps really be what they call the great Satan. That's an interesting thought. Pastor Dave, let me bring you in now at this point, instead of waiting for later. Had you heard some of those things about our um, State Department pushing in the name of human rights a same-sex marriage agenda, and not willing to give money out if you don't treat uh, the radical gay community certain ways, 
along with a myriad of other issues. Oh, yes, we've heard that uh, repeatedly as far as uh, our State Department dealing with other nations overseas, that you have to agree to what the United States State Department believes in order to accept uh, our help, then you also have to participate in that. So then I'm wondering about women's rights, in my view. I don't want to put one group above another, but on the basis of sheer numbers, I would think that women's rights under the canopy, if you will, of human rights ought to kind of come in a little bit higher because you got at least 50 percent of the population who are women Mm -hmm. and uh, not that many uh, in a historically Islamic nation and other places who would be in any way uh, openly homosexual or whatever um, just hasn't been accepted. Um, So... I'm trying to reconcile in my mind why uh, the State Department, why the president has put this amalgam of different issues, lumped them under the broad canopy of human rights, and then after stuffing this stuff down people's throats and making the reception of their money contingent on them making progress on these things, Mm -hmm. why we're surprised that we're getting pushed back not only in the Middle East, but in parts of Africa. What say you? Does it sound rational? No, it really doesn't, uh, at least for those who trust in God, that God will take care of uh, our population because part of this is a human rights agenda to help uh, the same-sex marriage. Part of that's abortion, accepting that population control. So it's not a human rights that we would agree with, but... uh, humanistically, men tend to say, we've got to control things. We've got to control the population and the people in it, and therefore you have to accept our agenda or we will not give you the money that you want. So really, what I see is that this White House has a values-based agenda uh, that is not based on biblical principles, but (coughs) many people see it as a secular agenda and um, I'm very, very concerned that it is not just secular. It's more, in some ways, what I'm going to call a little bit anti-Christian. One of the interesting things about Benghazi, and we'll move on from here, is that there's a team of special operations troops that have been assigned to the embassy in Libya in 2011 to provide security. Uh, security that was significantly downsized, and it changed its mission and training shortly before the attack. And the man, Hicks, who was kind of at the center of the discussion uh, yesterday, uh, said that team was about 14 to 16 elite troops, was whittled down to four um, after them, two of them were carjacked and other decisions were made, and it looked like common sense would have told one that you got problems, things are getting worse and worse, you got to deploy people different ways. Uh, There were military suggestions uh, that there should be certain kinds of aerial interventions that would have caused confusion and maybe caused the small group, only 60 people gathering outside of an embassy, to scatter. Mm -hmm. Uh, That wasn't done, so... I've got real concerns that we have this doctrinaire opinion of things, kind of uh, the re- a reverse Moses trend. You bring down your Ten Commandments of this must be and it must be now, push this on folks, then don't back them up with help for a number of reasons, and then we want to, at the end of the day, blame the backlash on something that somebody else did right before the election. It sounded plausible. Mm. What kind of things have you heard from the Christian community about this excuse that, oh, this is just because of the video? And, uh, or do you think most people are, what kind of things have you heard? And then secondly, do most people even care? Are we talking about an issue that only people that listen to Fox News in the middle of the night uh, in their pajamas, uh, are those people the only people that are interested in this stuff? 
Woo, you know, it's been so long since it happened, as uh, the uh, press secretary said for the president. It's been so long that some people have definitely lost interest, but hopefully, uh, and thank God there are enough people who really care, concerned, because people lost their lives, and there's something wrong with our State Department if they're not willing to defend the Americans that they've placed there. Is there some sort of cover-up? Uh, is it the fact that now the president's declaring that Osama bin Laden and his terroristic organization, the al-Qaeda, yeah. have been removed, that decimated, there's no more power left, and so we're the victors. And uh, that might look, the State Department may look bad if uh, we have a terrorist attack. So let's blame it on a video. Wow. I think it's serious. You're listening to the Harry Jackson Show. The voice you just heard was David Parlett. You can reach us at Bishop Harry, hashtag the Harry Jackson Show. We're talking about this Benghazi issue. We have not spent very much time on it. Let's move on to one major thing. In addition, on the front page of USA Today, turning point on race is what it says. And it's saying the two pending Supreme Court uh, decisions could say in essence that, hey, America, you're good. We don't have a problem with uh, discrimination anymore. And it looks as though uh, these two cases that are uh, nearing a decision within weeks at the Supreme Court may uproot what has been historic affirmative action stances, which have allowed folks to enter school uh, in order to give uh, the beleaguered uh, African-American and Hispanic communities uh, specifically an opportunity uh, to go to school. And um, what say you? Has America overcome the issue of race and racism to the point that there's no longer a need for a helping hand? And uh, in that regard, as far as you're concerned? No, there's there's a long way to go. I thank God we have really made progress going all the way back to the Civil rights days of the 50s and 60s, I, I certainly believe we've come a long ways, but we've certainly got a long ways to go. Yeah, but you got a black president. Come on. If uh, you can become president or an ambassador or uh, what are the other positions we're looking at, you got to ask yourself the question, how hindered are you if you can come to that level? And so although I agree with you, there may be some uh, distance some folks need to come. And although I used to be black, uh, I understand mm. that uh, people in the studio are laughing. Uh, I am still have a, uh, a darker hued skin tone. Uh, but my, my point would simply be, how long do we keep giving maybe unwarranted freebies out? Mm. Um, you know, the idea was in the early days that poor people who wouldn't otherwise get an opportunity would be empowered through an affirmative action, through scholarship opportunities. Now, are we really in a place where people feel like they're entitled to get a leg up and they're not going to perform any better once they get in those positions? That sounds like a waste of money. It, it does, and it's a wrong mindset where, where people really become dependent upon the government and we need time to revisit. So we've only got a minute left in this segment. One idea that we might look at, and if some of my conservative friends listening today are saying, well, are you for affirmative action or are you not? Well, I personally believe that there is a need for very targeted affirmative action-like uh, steps to be taken, and they need to be specifically aimed. They have beginning and ending points. They need to be measured. We're at a point where we don't have enough money to just indiscriminately throw money everywhere. And we've got to make sure that whatever we're doing in any of these areas, there is ROI, a return on investment. And um, this is something we may come back to in some future segments. And uh, unfortunately, many of us who have traditional values are seen as being insensitive to the needs of people who may need a hand up. And I believe there are many, many people out there like that. But I'm not so sure that you should take, for example, since I'm African-American, a black middle class family who's already doing pretty good and let their kid get into Harvard, although they're below the level 
and they won't perform as well. And another kid can't get into any kind of college. And we only have so much money that we can kind of parse around. You've been listening to the Harry Jackson Show. And we want you to stay tuned right after this. You're going to hear about digestive health. Don't worry, we won't give you heartburn. Stay tuned. Here's founder and CEO of Cornerstone Payment Systems, Nick Logan. The goal of the Processing with a Purpose program was that a business or a ministry can take something that they do every day and change lives forever. Because choosing a credit card processing company or choosing an insurance company, these are business decisions that you make. And Cornerstone has developed our business such that for as long as your business or ministry processing with Cornerstone, we will donate back to American Family. And that grows. One of the things that we focused on is being able to facilitate donations. What we did is we developed interface that worked directly with the leading donor management systems in the U.S. So if your church or ministry is receiving electronic donations today, we would love to speak with you about the mission of what you're called to be about for Christ. Cornerstonepaymentsystems.com or 877-356-1208. Cornerstone Payment Systems is a registered ISO of Harris Bank, Buffalo Grove, Illinois, member FDIC. It's probably safe to say that you've been let down or hurt by someone. Maybe you've been hurt by a Christian, and as a result, you find it hard to trust anyone who calls themselves a Christian. You may have even transferred that lack of trust to God. That's completely understandable, but let me assure you that there is a huge difference between man's character and God's. You see, every human being since the fall of Adam and Eve has been born with a condition called sin. It's what causes us to act selfishly and do other things that can hurt ourselves and others. God, on the other hand, is completely opposite. 1 John 4, 8 tells us that God is love. He will never do anything to hurt us, but it goes beyond that. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Everything he says he'll do will be done. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Find out more about God, why you can trust Him, and how He made a way to be free from sin at knowhim.afr.net. Reality TV continues to make America better. This time with a social media first. How about a divorce announcement made via Twitter before the spouse being divorced even knew about it? Real Housewives star Portia Stewart learned via Twitter that her husband, former NFL quarterback Cordell Stewart, had filed for divorce. The two were living in the same house when Portia learned her marriage was over. I hope this ridiculous tragedy awakens the real housewives being lulled to sleep by weekly installments of artificial reality. Marriage is not qualified by ratings. Certainly, it shouldn't be handled flippantly via Twitter or even text message. It's time to fully invest in our marriage, ladies, reject Hollywood's counsel, and rebuild our homes. Until Hollywood uses its power for good, protect your family. With a heart for the urban family, I'm today's urban woman, Nikki Addison. Connect with us at urbanfamilytalk.com. Welcome back to the Harry Jackson Show. I'm Harry Jackson. We are a part of the Urban Family Talk Network. And it's good to hear Miki on that last spot. And uh, we are not in Mississippi, the headquarters of this wonderful network. We are in suburban Washington, D.C. Don't shout us down. No stones being thrown. Uh, It's not that bad of a place. A lot of torment is coming out of this region. So when you think of us, pray for us. You can reach us at Bishop Harry, hashtag the Harry Jackson Show. And uh, things are going to get better up here after a while. And I believe that if you and I, uh, we become more active, we can see some great things happen. In this segment, we're going to be talking in just a moment with Nancy Parlett, author, speaker, digestive health specialist. And she's got a lot of things she's very passionate about. And uh, in order to lead into that, though, Ironically, right here in the paper, we see Hmm. our Governor Christie of New Jersey, who I kind of like his straight talk. You know, those of you who know me well, especially people here, know I have a penchant for. I'd like to watch the Westerns 
And uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, is my all-time hero. I just had to give him a shout-out. That's as we got to do that every now and again. Although, unlike the first three days or several days of the week where I had my cowboy hat on and my Western clothes, I've got a suit on today, folks. But Christy, Chris Christie is losing weight, and he's dealing with this, I think, controversial surgery. Um, but he's done the, uh, the surgical weight loss approach, and he's done it because he feels like his health is more important than anything. Many people, though, are very skeptical. They're saying that he's doing this because of political reasons. And um, we've never had a fat president, and uh, we certainly had a lot of fat heads in there. Um, but that's a whole other discussion. But uh, I think if you go back a few years, we've had a few overweight guys in. Uh, but I think he's doing the right thing. And so obesity is a major problem. And I guess we need to really talk to Nancy about how one should go about doing these things correctly. She also helped Pastor Steve Reynolds, who was on our program, who did the Bod for God DVD series, who was featured in the Washington Post. And um, you've worked with him uh, with his successful Losing to Live weight loss program. Welcome to the program. And so what do you think about a person like Chris Christie being in the news are we going to see more of this? Is it really a pandemic problem, this obesity? How should we start trying to attack these problems in our culture? According to the Centers for Disease Control, as of January 2012, one in three Americans is obese. One in three. So that wow. is a big problem. Uh, there's definitely a lot we need to be concerned about. How we go about fixing the problem? Mm -hmm. mm, not sure. You know, lot band, the, the Surgery is the way to go. Uh, that is probably the healthiest of the different choices that are out there of surgeries. But uh, I really prefer people to make mm -hmm. a lifestyle change. It has to be not a quick fix to make it happen. It has to be lifestyle. And what this does is it forces you to have to change the way you eat. And it does have success. But over and over again, you see that people end up getting back to being overweight again in the long run because... Yeah. They don't really change the way they're living, and you have to make those kind of changes. Well, Mike Huckabee has, is a great example. Uh, he, as governor, was very, very overweight, uh, lost a lot of weight, did a couple of marathons, did almost, I think it must have been a decade, um, in a much uh, smaller suit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not back up to where he was, nowhere near it, but he's a little bit more heavy than before. And uh, I've got to believe, though, that A, he's prolonged his life by doing something, but B, maintaining is all of our problems. So um, maybe you could tell us a little bit more uh, about how you'd go about it. And you've also helped David Parlett. Parlette, Parlette, Nancy Parlette. Parlette yeah, we tend, tend to be uh, related to one another. You she, tend to be related to one another? We tend to be because okay. uh, she has tended to, to marry my youngest brother. Uh, they've been I college see. college friends all the way back uh, decades ago. But, yeah, she made a big difference in my life a good 20 years ago, helping me uh, kind of rearrange the way I was eating. I, I just went out for all the fast food chicken. I thought chicken was the way to go, and I'd have two chicken meals, one for lunch, one for dinner, keep going with the church uh, pace of life, mm -hmm. and uh, I began to get more and more sick, as I understood from Nancy, that chicken is very hard to digest, and the, compound, the compounded interest on it, that chicken. It's the gospel bird, man, what you talking about? <laughs> oh, I, that's what we learned in church, but, but Wendy's and all the Chick-fil-A's were not helping uh, day after day, s seven days a week. 14 meals a week. Praise God, it was not helping me. So the compounded problems created health issues, and yeah. I began to get sick and sick. And uh, she helped me understand I got to get away from that and get more towards the fruits, vegetables, and an occasional piece of chicken, but a, a whole lot more fish. And so, yeah, Nancy, she, I'm going back to Wendy's, and I don't know. <laughs> Can you help us? What, what should we do? 
I can I can help you. Yay. Uh, yeah, and as it turns out, they say uh, that Christians are the most overweight people group. Unfortunately, you know, because we don't smoke, we don't drink, you know, we don't run around. But, boy, do we love to eat. And everything we do together, there's food, right? Am I right? Yeah. Yes, there it's is. fellowship. Fellowship. Mm-hmm. Fellowship around the table. So the problem is we just need to change what's on that table a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think if we work on that, we will have great success. Uh, some of the things, as uh, Pastor Dave talked about, were, you know, people just don't eat their fruits and vegetables. And fruits and vegetables have the most nutrition per calorie. So Mm -hmm. uh, the other great thing about fruits and vegetables is they're high in fiber. And fiber is vital if you want to lose weight, all right? Because, A, you're going to fill up with fiber. You're going to feel satisfied. That's really important. So you're not going to have those cravings. You're going to be getting so many nutrients because of all the vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and uh, antioxidants in those fruits and vegetables. Then um, fiber also helps you lose, you know, lose your cholesterol. So it helps mm-hmm. you get rid of your cholesterol. And it helps give you, the other great thing is it helps balance your blood sugar. So you know, throughout the morning, you're going to have consistent energy. Whereas when you have, whether it's your, your coffee, your energy drinks, whether you're eating you know, your fast food donuts and things like that, run through the drive-thru in the morning, you, you're going to get a momentary lift, but then you're going to crash. And so what's going to happen? You're going to crave stimulation again. You're going to crave your sugar, your sweets, your carbs, whatever. And you'll go back to eating unhealthy. And so it's this cycle all day long. And um, that's one of the things that causes us to gain that weight. Now, you realize you've offended most of the people listening already. I'm just joking. But but I got a dumb question. for it Maybe not dumb, but it's one that, honestly, I need answered. What is a fiber? I mean, I know microfiber... In terms of cloth, I mean, so fiber for a simple guy. Uh, well, there are two kinds of fiber, soluble and insoluble fiber. Okay. And that doesn't necessarily help answer the question at all. But that's how they divide it up. Uh-huh. But um, if you think of any animal products, there's no fiber in there. When uh-huh. you think of, like, the stem of a plant or the, the outside of an apple, all uh-huh. those things are, you have to really chew them. They're fibrous. They, they take, um, you know, you just have to break them down in your mouth, and you have different enzymes that do that. Um, and some of those fibers, uh, again, go, you know, into your uh, body, and they help you make energy. They um, stay, they actually get broken down and digested and stay within your body. Others, mm-hmm. the insoluble fibers get pushed through the body, which helps us uh, think with uh, important things like elimination so that we don't have constipation. So uh, so animal products do not have fiber in them, but your whole grains, your fruits, your veggies do. So that's a real important reason to eat a lot more um, fruits and veggies and whole grains. Okay. So yeah. you, you just said enzymes are important? I did, and that sort of can answer what uh, Bishop Perry was asking about. What is this digestive health stuff? <laughs> what is that all about? And, uh, and I'll share a little bit of my story, if that's okay, because that answers that question as well. But um, when I was in college... I started having digestive problems, and I would get gas and bloating and just terrible indigestion and pain, Mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes enough to, you know, curl up in a little ball and just be feeling like I was in agony. Uh, And over time, it would kind of come and go, come and go. Uh, And then uh, a few years into my marriage, we finally said, you know, I probably ought to have this checked out. (laughs) might be a wise idea. So I went to all your typical doctors, your gastroenterologists, had all those lovely little tests that nobody likes to have done to you. Oh, yes. And they came back with the wonderful you know, answer that, well, you know what? You have a lot of acid in your stomach. I was like, I could have told you that. Uh, you know, yeah. And so that was good to know. And they gave me a, you know, an antacid. They said, here, take Tagamet. And certainly Tagamet did help my symptoms. But I really didn't think I was suffering from a Tagamet deficiency. So I wanted to find out, you know, what was really causing this? Mm -hmm. And it was then that I began um, searching and looking, and I started studying nutrition. And I began to understand that um, we have something called enzymes that help break down our food. And some of us don't get, um, don't have enough uh, or have food sensitivities so that we don't break down the food well. And with the help of things like digestive enzymes, because I don't break down some sugars well, that immediately gave me relief. 
And so I began studying more into the area of digestion and uh, took a course with the Loomis Institute, which helped uh, certify me as a digestive health specialist and helping people figure out what kind of sensitivities do you have? What do you need? Uh, things like probiotics is another whole topic we'll get into later. But uh, those are some of the things that have to do that. Okay. You had another question? I, I had another question dealing with sickness and disease. So you're saying basically without these enzymes or the way that Americans eat, really are making us sick and, and causing uh, uh, physical problems and early, uh, early death even for many people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I really believe that the food that we're eating in America, half of it isn't really food. If you want to define food, which I like to do because most people don't even think about what is food. But, you know, food is something that's made by God in nature that helps our body to, you know, restore its health, to grow, to make energy. And most of the food in the grocery store is so processed, so refined, you know, so full of chemical additives and non-natural stuff that it's not really even food anymore. And there's nothing in it that helps us with our health. Wow. And so we're eating so much of that that we're, you know, we're causing our own demise <coughs> of our own health. And that is the problem because most of health problems, I believe, come from either a deficiency, which we're not getting if we're eating that kind of food, or a toxicity, which again is coming in from not only our environment, but also so many of the things that we put in our mouth that we think are okay to eat. Mm. Now, so, so let me go back. I'm, I'm, I'm a little simple on these issues. One of the things that I'm doing now is I've got some food that's shipped to my house. We ate breakfast a few minutes ago. That's not part of that diet. But other than here, uh, I eat things that are kind of prepackaged on a certain dietary plan. My question is, how much fruits and vegetables, is there a certain diet you describe to that folks can say, I can measure things? And then second, you talked about acidity. And that sounds a little odd to the average person. So how do I know I've got acid? You're not talking about acid reflux alone, I don't think. So what is this acidity stuff? <laughs> break, break it down so uh, a fool, though he be a wayfaring man, quoting King, King James Bible, can still find his way along here. All right. Well, first you asked me about the fruits and veggies. Yep. Um, so basically people, adults should be having at least seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day, uh, somewhere in the range of three fruits Woo! and four servings of vegetables. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Most Americans have nowhere, nowhere close to that. Does that include cheesecake? <laughs> sorry. Sorry. We can't <laughs> count cheese. I wish we could count cheesecake. <laughs> oh, Because we, we do enjoy cheesecake over here. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Dave can affirm that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, we do. We want to do it. And there's lots of ways you can get uh, fruits and veggies more into your diet, which we can talk more about. To answer your uh, acid alkaline question, um, the easiest way to do that in less than a minute, I think, is to talk about a swimming pool. And when you think about swimming pool, you have to keep the chlorine levels just right, right? If you, if you don't have enough in there, the algae starts to grow. If you have too much, you know, it starts um, eating away at the pipes and everything and burning your eyes and all that sort of thing. Well, that's the way our body is. It, it seeks something called homeostasis, and mm. we all want to be balanced. Um, and if we don't get enough of the right foods or we put in too many of the wrong foods, we begin to get more and more acid in our body, and it builds up, and it causes this disease. It makes us more vulnerable to disease. But foods like fruits and vegetables um, are key, raw nuts and seeds. Those are some of the foods that are alkalizing and really help our body to be balanced. When you think of antioxidants, uh, you can get a lot from that, too. We're going to pick up right there. We're going to ask her to hold over for a moment and share a little bit in this last segment. You've been listening to the voice of... Nancy Parlett, and uh, she is related by marriage to David Parlett. And uh, we'll make that clear it's not his sister or his wife. Uh, but stay tuned. We've got some great information uh, that has been coming forth. And uh, I believe that we're going to make some practical understanding of this whole uh, alkaline, acidic issue, and then a little bit more about the servings and how this fiber concept works with the pencil sharpening edge of it all. How in the world, with all of this stuff, all the temptations around us, do I lose weight? 
without having to do a lap dance. I mean, a lap band <laughs> surgery. Uh, I, I got that wrong. So, so stay tuned to the Harry Jackson Show. A distraction on the highway can result in a wreck. A distraction in your spiritual life can be far worse. Dr. Tony Evans explains why as he brings us the alternative view. Demons promote Satan by doctrine, by destruction, by domination, also by distraction. Now what do I mean? We have far too many Christians still picking up their paper looking at their horoscope. We have far too many Christians who are unclear on the distraction that demons bring about when they lure us away from a total centralized focus on God. Don't look to astrology. Don't measure the stars. Don't play the cards. Don't pick up the crystal balls. All of that is a denial that Jehovah is the Lord your God. Whenever you appeal, listen to me, to the created to do what is the prerogative of the creator. You change gods. Not only that, but look at Deuteronomy 18, verse 12. For whosoever does these things is detestable to the Lord, and because of these things, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. To put it another way, when you add anything next to God and do not allow God to be only God, you lose the blessing of God. Raising children alone can be one of the toughest jobs in the world. And we have help for you in the form of a booklet called Tony Evans Speaks Out on Single Parenting. Get details and requests online at TonyEvans.org or call us at 1-800-800-3222. You've been listening to The Alternative View. With today's Faith to Action commentary, here's Janet Porter. The right to pray at graduation. It's something that has been blocked or denied at many schools across the country. Each year there are cases where students are told they cannot pray or mention Jesus in a graduation speech, often under the threat of severe consequences if they do. But schools are supposed to remain neutral on graduation prayer, as well as the expression of any religious viewpoint in a public ceremony or any other time, not commanding or prohibiting it. Liberty Council has launched its annual Friend or Foe Graduation Prayer Campaign. They are prepared to defend, free of charge, even going to court if necessary, to ensure that prayer and religious viewpoints are not suppressed. If you need help, call them at 800-671-1776. Visit F2A.org for more commentaries and action steps, along with news, links, and much more for your state. Go to F2A.org. Welcome back to the Harry Jackson Show. I'm your host, Harry Jackson, joined in the studio by my co-host, David Parlett, and with his sister-in-law, Nancy Parlett, author, speaker, digestive health specialist. And I found out that that means a whole lot about how we get our bodies in shape. So she said two things so far that we've been powerful, uh, many things, but the two kind of train tracks we're dealing with is uh, we're going to have to deal with the acidity in our bodies, and the other is fiber, and uh, I'm trying to make sense of the acidity question and seven servings of fruits and vegetables. Can you elaborate on that for us? I certainly can. Well, one way we want to uh, get in those seven servings and uh, is that they do help alkaline or alkalize our body. So mm-hmm. we were talking about this fact that, you know, when we're eating too much toxic stuff, when we're not getting the nutrition that we need, we become more and more acid. And, uh, what, what are some of the foods that cause that acidity? I wonder, well, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> there's a lot, uh, of course we think of things like drugs and alcohol, tobacco, obviously chemical additives and preservatives, mm-hmm. all of those things are acidic to the body, but so uh, are things like dairy products and refined sugar 
uh, wow. white, you know, meat, uh, poultry, fried foods, coffee, tea, energy drinks. Uh, all of those things also cause acidity to the body. Can you repeat that list real quick? I sure can. Uh, dairy products, uh, refined white flour foods, refined sugar, uh, meats and poultry, fried foods especially, uh, coffee, tea, you know, energy drinks and soda, salt, uh, trans fats, artificial sweeteners, uh, all the chemical additives of those things, and then, of course, alcohol, drugs, and tobacco are the worst. And you left off cheesecake. That fits with the dairy products, I'm afraid, and the sugar. <laughs> it's got a bunch of them all in one. Darn it. Yeah. I know. But I'm not saying you can never have cheesecake, Bishop. I'm saying that as long as you balance things properly and get plenty of fruits and vegetables, I will let you enjoy some cheesecake on Mother's Day, okay? Ah, thank you. <laughs> but that's exactly the point. We want to make sure that we get, hopefully, 70% alkalizing foods each day with no more than 30% acidic foods. That's like perfection. Most of uh -huh. us are not there, but the goal is to work towards that. Wow. Um, you know, and the alkalizing foods, again, the foods that help detox our body, help build up the nutrition levels mm -hmm. are the raw fruits and vegetables, um, you know, cooked vegetables, raw nuts and seeds. Uh, those are the keys. And some of the best uh, alkalizing foods that really help reduce inflammation for those who have pain and swelling, who struggle with arthritis and things, these are some foods that are great for them. A pineapple. Pineapple is number one uh, for reducing inflammation and for wow. alkalizing the body. Uh, things like parsley and then <coughs> our herbs and spices, ginger, turmeric, those are great uh, for helping to alkalize the body. Avocados and all the berries are full of, um, full of antioxidants that help to cleanse out and heal and uh, reduce free radical damage in our cells. Celery, celery, uh, celery, cherries, all the dark leafy greens are great. But how can we get them in our body in an easy way? Yep. Here's one easy way, and it? it's called green smoothies. And many people are familiar with smoothies today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, but the problem is a lot of the smoothies are just, you know, fruits and sugary, syrupy stuff stuck in mm -hmm. there. That is not going to cut it. Okay? We do want the fruit because that's awesome. That's good for us. We're getting our fruit in. You can add water. Um, or, uh, you know, orange juice, something like that. But then you're going to top it off with a handful or two of greens, like spinach or kale, uh, collard greens. And, yeah, exactly. Everybody goes, are you kidding? You want me to have that? Ew. But yeah. if you put in the right balance, you don't even taste the greens. And so here mm -hmm. you are getting these vibrant, vital greens for your health that, um, you know, are going to help your body get full of calcium and magnesium, potassium, minerals, and yet, you don't have to taste it. How, how cool is that? I'm, I'm going to ask you to repeat that in just a moment. The voice you're listening to is Nancy Parlett. And she has a great book out. And I wanted to make sure I got a chance to talk about this. The Busy Mom's 10-Minute Guide to a Healthy, Happy Family. Wow, if you can do that in 10 minutes, that's a miracle worker in the making. And uh, also, we want to remind you that you have a website. I do. And what is the website? It's nancyparlette.com, and that's N-A-N-C-Y-P-A-R-L-E-T-T-E.com. And you can see more about my book. You can also sign up for a free email newsletter and some other health tips through uh, there as well. Now, what I like about her approach is that she's very practical. We're going to go dive back in here to the subject matter. Uh, Nancy, repeat your website one more time, if you don't mind. Sure. NancyParlette.com, N-A-N-C-Y-P-A-R-L-E-T-T-E.com. And so I'm a really big believer in that if we're going to try to master new material, you've got to, A, keep it simple. Number two, master a couple of concepts. And if you can do that, you can start making some changes. All too often, we do too much, too soon, and then we don't work at mastering anything. It's really a problem. I want to mention the Twitter shout-out. And uh, you can reach us at Bishop Harry, uh, hashtag the Harry Jackson Show, and we'll respond to you on the air. Or you can get us on email at theharryjacksonshow.com, and that's good. 
um, Kenny and Kim Anderson. All right, keep passing on the word. And we've had tremendous uh, growth in these tweets. And uh, on a topic like this, I want you to send out a tweet. Now I'm going to put Nancy on the spot. Concerning Alkaline, I need you to give them a Twitter um, statement. You know, they're short and, and, and pithy. So we're going to summarize about what we've been saying about this um, fiber and alkaline. What would be a pithy tweet that we could put out? Um, we need seven servings of fruit and vegetables a day. To alkalize your body. There you go. Okay, well, Get seven alkal- servings of fruits and vegetables today to alkalize your body. I like that. I like that. So it gives me a number, it gives me something that's achievable. And I know what these fruits and vegetables are. Uh, they're not candied fruits, they are not uh, fruit juices that are laced with sugar. Um, they're whole grains, uh, they're fruits and vegetables. And there is a whole list of things that we should really watch out for that give us tremendous acidity. Uh, I should be eating some raw fruits, raw fresher vegetables, raw nuts and seeds. Pineapple is good to break arthritis. And ginger, am I, am I did I take yes, good sir. notes? So that's helpful for me because uh, I'm at an age now, I'm trying to, Push Mr. Arthur back uh, from my door. And uh, so that is really, really, really great. Now, where does water play into all of this, Nancy? I hear people talking about water all the time. I have uh, really been working over the last year at drinking more and more water. And uh, I'm at a point now about I do okay about every other day. Um, drink water all the time, but every other day I would get the, I probably at my height, weight, et cetera, I need to drink about a hundred ounces plus of water. So I'm able to do that in a day, uh, maybe every other day. Some days I don't quite get two of those 50 ounce, uh, distilled water things all the way down. Um, so how important is it? Does it work with the alkaline balance? Yes. And, uh, before I jump onto that, I just want to mention there's more about green smoothies in my book. I have recipes and a real Uh description of it. So I just want to throw that out. If people want to find out more about green smoothies, but yes, water is vital. Water helps detox our body. Every metabolic action requires water in our body. Uh, most of us walk around dehydrated and we think, in fact, a lot of people overeat thinking they're hungry when really they're thirsty and they just need to be drinking water. If, you, if you're feeling tired, again, oftentimes you just need some water. Water is great, it's vital to the body. And as you said, most people need to be drinking about half their body weight in ounces. So if you're mm-hmm. 140 pounds, that means 70 ounces of water a day. Uh, and most of us come nowhere near that. And don't start doing that tomorrow, though. If you're not there now, start slowly or you'll be running to the bathroom all day long. But just add in a cup a day here, a few cups there. And throughout, you know, over several weeks, you start getting up there. And it's amazing how much better you'll feel. Um, but water is important to help in alkalize our body because it does flush out the toxins. And uh, water needs to be one of the key things that we have mm-hmm. every day, um, if we want to think more clearly, if we want to uh, stay healthy, we need to flush out all the toxins daily with that. One of the things that most Americans do, Bishop, instead of drinking water, they be drinking <coughs> soda, soda, soda uh-huh. all day long, or energy drinks or the other caffeine-filled uh, foods. And those actually cause you to be dehydrated. Caffeine and all the sugar wow. cause you to be dehydrated because they make you lose water. You run to the bathroom I see. Um, you know, to get the caffeine out, to flush out the sugars. So uh, 
people need to be careful and realize, especially diet sodas that have the artificial sweeteners in it, they're even worse for the body. Um, and then the soda has phosphoric acid. Talk about acidifying, right? Mm -hmm. Again, and what the caffeine and the sugar and these acids do to our bodies is they leach the minerals out. Not only do they dehydrate us, but it takes calcium, magnesium to flush out these things from our body. So the more soda we put in, the more we lose bone mass because it help, takes calcium from the bones. Help me out why diet soda is bad. You're, you're speaking to an addict I right hear now. You. I hear you, brother. <laughs> so my hand is starting to shake. <laughs> well, here's one thing that they have found. Hold on tight to the mic. <laughs> that um, not only are the artificial sweeteners, most of them are carcinogenic, cancer-causing, but wow. um, they have found in research that people who drink diet soda at the end of the day end up eating more calories than people who either don't drink soda or just drink regular soda. Wow. And here's why. Because yeah. when you put that in your body, all those artificial sweeteners, your body doesn't understand artificial. You know, it just thinks, oh, my gosh, there's all the sugar coming in because that's what the tongue tastes. And so it sends insulin out into your bloodstream thinking there's sugar coming. i got to get ready because the insulin's going to carry that sugar into your cells for making energy. But there is no sugar. It's faked out. And so what that does is it causes your blood sugar level to crash. And your body then begins craving, you know, sugar again and more calories to build back up um and through the end of the day your body's like going i was really expecting a lot of calories there a lot of sugar and i didn't get it so come on body give it to me now and so little by little mm. you, you end up eating more by the end of the day because of those cravings um and the other thing that diet soda does is that they found it causes obesity um it's mm -hmm. impacted especially aspartame um, and then that gets us into the whole MSG topic, because I want to throw that out there. Artificial flavoring, especially monosodium glutamate, MSG, um, that causes obesity in the research they've done with rats. So it's scary stuff, what we're putting in our bodies today. And, and that's why I am so passionate about, you know, the church body of Christ, getting them healthy again so they can be all God's meant them to be instead of being sick and tired, you know, all the time. Well, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen to that. <laughs> So, unpack, we only got a minute left, the aspartame thing. You said so much in that last sentence. I was going, whoo, she went over my head. Uh, so, I'm, I'm thankful I get these pre-prepared meals, which means I don't have to think about some of the stuff because salt, sugar, some of these other things are... Uh, taken out, but the aspartame and this diet soda stuff where you think you're getting away with fewer calories mm -hmm. and we've been taught to watch the calories on the back of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, why is that bad? And your nancyparlette.com is your website? Yes. All right, folks, don't forget that. nancyparlette.com. Okay, well, let's just throw out a list by the FDA, our Food and Drug Administration, some of these side effects that aspartame can have, okay? Mm -hmm. Memory loss, nerve cell damage, migraines, reproductive disorders, mental confusion, brain lesions, blindness, joint pain, Alzheimer's, bloating, nervous system disorders, <coughs> hair loss, food cravings, and weight gain. Is that enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that unbelievable? Um, you know, between um, I mean, both of them are very similar. They, they're called excitotoxins. What they do is they actually stimulate the neurons to, to, to death. I understand. Well, that's a great place. We got to stop. The, the voice you are listening to is Nancy Parlett, and uh, she's sister-in-law to David Parlett here on the program. She's got some great information. I hope you were informed today. That's why we have this segment. Uh, on health, and uh, we want you to tune in tomorrow where we're going to be talking about families again, and uh, I believe that if we'll put into practice the things that we're listening, we will, uh, and hearing, that we'll make a real change in our lives. See you again tomorrow on The Harry Jackson Show. <laughs>